So this is what happens when I don't use this room for a while. And then Halloween happens. And then Thanksgiving. And then Christmas. Hmm. All right, I am finally doing the review of the FDRX 3000. I released an unboxing several weeks ago, and now it's like my second most popular video, so I'm gonna review this thing real quick. I've had this action cam for like a month and a half. I've been to Belize, Costa Maya, Honduras. I've been like everywhere. I've been zip lining, I've been ATV riding, I've been riding down water slides, I even went into a cave. So I've been basically doing like everything. So now I am finally ready to share my thoughts on this device right here. I'm just gonna cut to the chase. I really like this device. Anyone looking for an action cam right now needs to take a look at the FDR X 3000. I still hate that name though. Now, as you can hear, the sound quality is actually really good. It sounds really natural, it doesn't sound yeah, robotic, it's, and it's like exactly the way I remember it from last time. It doesn't sound like you're hearing me through a sock, it just sounds really good. Now the image quality is good, and honestly at times it's breathtaking. Now when using this camera, I record everything in vivid mode, and I just kind of play with the colors and stuff from there. But it does have a flat mode, which is what you're seeing me through right now. And that just gives you an idea of how flat the picture can get, and now you're seeing me after I color graded that. So it was flat, now it's color graded slightly. Keep in mind, I'm not a professional color grader, so it's definitely an amateur kind of thing, but there you go. This lens is super wide angle. When I was suctioning this camera to the windshield, not only was I able to capture me and Leslie, it actually captured even some of the windshield. It is that wide. Like it captured part of the windshield it was attached to. Like the corner, what? What? Now, typically when you use a super wide lens, it warps the image to get that much picture in the frame. And Sony has just figured out a nice sweet spot to where it captures a wide amount of stuff, but it doesn't warp things too bad. It's not too noticeable. Even on the edges, things don't look too shabby. And if you're in a situation where you don't want the image to be that wide, you can always use a setting that lowers the field of view, but you have to use a less than 4K resolution to do that. It did an okay job in darker scenes, although if it's really dark, you're gonna see a decent amount of noise. And here you can see me and Leslie in an elevator, and it's not too well lit. You can definitely tell that by the footage, and it looks a little hazy, and you can definitely see some noise there, but it's still a usable image. And the built-in OIS does a pretty good job of reducing the shakes and the jitters. In fact, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab you, so this is me just freehanding the camera right now. So pretty smooth, and I'm just kind of waving it around a little bit, not too much. Pretty nice. Now, the battery life on this thing is pretty good. Uh, alongside of the Sony battery it came with, I bought two knockoff batteries, and between those three batteries, I'm able to get a day of complete shooting without any issues at all. And I shoot about an hour to two hours every day. I had no problems at all. Now this action cam comes with a nice waterproof housing. So this right here is splash proof, meaning you can get it wet, but you can't submerge it. If you need to submerge it, there you go. Use this thing. Now this camera is very capable of slow motion. All you have to do is record at a higher frame rate. So for instance, for 1080p, you record at 120 frames per second. For 720p, you record at 240 frames per second. And then from there, you can slow down the footage. But it is at the cost of image resolution. And honestly, I think the image quality degrades a little bit when you jump down that far. Now, in the unboxing, I complained about the menu system. They have basically these arrows and this menu button, and you just have this little bitty digital screen that you're working with, and from that, you're supposed to navigate this thing, and it has a ton of settings. I am glad to inform you that, really, all you need to do is find the settings that you like and just kind of keep it at that. Most of the time, you're not gonna be fiddling with settings, and I like the fact that you have all these options just in case you need them. Now, that leads me to the elephant in the room. There there is no screen on this device anywhere. 
I mean, there is a screen option. It's like a watch thing that you can use to see what the thing is seeing, and that apparently it works really well. I don't know, I didn't get to try it. And I'll be honest, I really actually wanted the watch screen, but it wasn't available anywhere. So I didn't get that option. But in hindsight, I'm actually kind of happy I didn't. I actually find not having a screen pretty free. You just hit the record button and then you go. 10 times out of 10, the image is usable. And eight times out of 10, the image is actually really good and I got everything that I needed. My suggestion if you do decide to use this without a screen is just make sure whatever you're recording is pretty well lit. And if you're outside, make sure the sun is behind the camera. And keep in mind, you can always use your phone as an option screen if you do have a need that arises for it. And another thing that's really nice about this is that it actually has a mode that you can change to where basically all you got to do is even when the camera is off, you just hit the record button and it turns the camera on and starts recording within a few seconds. Now, no device is without its imperfections, so let's talk about some stuff that's not so great. Now, the sound quality whenever you're recording inside of the housing is basically useless. It's just really... Another problem is that it has a wind reduction mode, and that name is pretty fitting because it does reduce the wind noise a little bit. Like I'm right on top of water, there's wind all around. This is a test of the wind reduction mode. This camera has a time-lapse feature, which is really cool. You just set how many images you want, you set how long you want it to be shooting for, and then it just shoots the images. Problem is, to shoot an effective time-lapse, you need from 200 to 500 images. You have to download their action cam movie creator software to turn it from all these images into a nice, fluid video. What you're seeing right here is the only two times that I tried it, and honestly, I just don't like working with extra software. Now, another issue is there is no 1440p option. There's 4K, and then there's HD, which is 1080p, and then somewhere in the middle there is another option called 1440p. The GoPro has it, does 1440p at 60 frames per second, but on this camera, there is no middle option. Either it's 4K at 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second, or you have 1080p at 120 frames per second. I would have loved to have a middle option. There are times when I want a little bit of slow motion, which you can do with 60 frames per second, slowing it down, but I don't have that option here. It would have been nice to have it. Another issue is if you're ever filming and the sun just kind of happens to be in the frame, you might see streaks of light come across the image and because of the camera on the screen, you're not gonna notice that, and it's pretty harsh to the image. But it also kinda looks cool too, I don't know. That's kind of a... Uh... And that's about it about my complaints. I know there's nothing really major there, just a couple minor things. It's a camera that I literally just leave in my pocket and then I pull it out whenever there's just some immediate need that I can't use my big camera for. It's a nice B cam, it's a nice action cam, and it's a nice, oh crap, there's this thing that's happening right now, I need to get it real fast. And what's really exciting is that this device uh, actually just got a really nice price drop. Uh, it started out at $400. In fact, when I purchased it, it was $400. Now it's $350. So there you go. Nice little savings there for you. Now, one thing I do want to mention is I've released four vlogs from our November vacation cruise, and footage from this device was intermingled with this camera to this camera, and then my cell phone camera were all intermingled into those vlogs. But I was so impressed with it that by the end of the trip, I just started using this thing exclusively because it was just so convenient and nice and I didn't have to finagle things and monitor stuff. It was just really, really nice. The next two vlogs that I'm releasing are going to only be footage that I shot on this device. And for the first one, I'm going to actually use the footage as is. I'm not going to touch it up. I'm not going to play with the colors. I'm not going to mess with the audio. But what I am going to do is I'm going to, if there is a, segments that are really loud, I'm going to bring that down. And if there's segments that are really quiet, I'm going to bring them up because I find the fiddling with the volume thing really annoying. And on the second vlog, I'm going to actually touch up everything. I'm touch up the audio, I'm gonna to touch up the image quality, and that way you get to see a full spectrum of what is possible with this device. And I'm really excited about it, so please subscribe so you don't miss those two videos. If you're interested in this action cam at all, that will give you 
tons of different locations. There will even be some action sequences like zip lining, and there might even be a dune buggy, just saying. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those vlogs. But yeah, I am super excited about this action cam. If anything that I've talked about sounds interesting, you should definitely check it out. I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park. Put your helmet down. All right. <laughs> Can't breathe as well. Safety. What? Safety. Safety.